Hey, so today we are looking at doing some battery cable lug crimping, I guess you would call it. So I got a couple different tools. Of course, you guys know me. I got tools for everything and more than one for everything because it's the way I am. Uh, so I bought this hydraulic crimper just because, um, well, I wanted one. Didn't really need one, but I bought one because I wanted one. Uh, I do actually like it. It works really well, but um, I will tell you what you need to do with this uh, because you do have to do a little modification in my opinion um, there is a hammer style one there's all kinds of different ways to do this this is just three ways I have this is a hammer style one pretty simple they're not super expensive and then the this screw style one which is similar to the hammer style it's just that you use an impact gun well I think you're actually supposed to use a ratchet I use an impact gun but um, to do that so this works really well this works really well. This works really well. It just depends on how much money you want to spend. Now, out of the three, this is actually the most expensive one. I think this was like $125. That's, if you guys are interested in looking one, that is the part number and where it came from. Um, now, that's Canadian dollars, obviously. Um, this was like $40. And this was like $75 or $80. So, realistically, they're not a huge price difference between them. Um, you know, for the average dudes, probably something like this is more than fine. It's just that this, you physically have to be able to put it on something and hammer it, right? So um, this is a really nice option. Um, I don't know, the original one of these, one of my old, old bosses bought one years and years ago. He paid like $850 for it. So the price of stuff has come down immensely. But I'm going to show you guys how I do my battery cable ends um, and basically all of my wire ends when I'm doing stuff um, just to... For you guys that have never done it, or if you guys have problems, this is how I do it. It is not the fastest way to do it, but this is how I do it. So let's get after it here. So I've got cable. This cable is one aught. And maybe I'll do a video, another video later, talking about what why sizes of wires and amperages and all that stuff. If you guys want, actually let me know in the comments. Um, if you guys would be interested in a video on that, going, talking about different sizes, how to tell what size they are, blah, 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 all that stuff. So let me know in the comments. So take an Ulfa knife, razor, whatever. It doesn't have to be an Ulfa knife. It's just that's what I use all the time. You're going to want to cut it. I cut it just a little bit longer, like an eighth of an inch longer. And the reason for that, I shall show you. Okay, battery cable end. Put this on there. You just turn it, get it on there. And like I said, I want a little bit of space there. That's a little bit more space than I want. But we'll get that as I flatten the end. That's okay. That'll be fine. So we got that on there. So what we're going to use, we're going to use this hydraulic one because I just bought it and I want to play with it. And that is literally all you have to do to crimp those. Now, what I do is the next step I'll show you in a second here, but I just want to talk about this tool just for a second here. So, oh yeah, so I guess I should mention that. So the reason I did it twice is the width of this versus that chuck. I like to crimp the full amount as much as you can because that's going to give this as much holding power as possible, right? So this tool, if you look at these, when they come together, that gap inside there, is a little bit too big to suit me. So what I do, I've had a couple different styles of this type of thing, is I just take them to the belt sander and I sand them a little bit and I close that gap up a little bit is all I do. So if you find, if you can crimp it and then pull the wire off, this isn't crimping enough. So sometimes you have to, not all of them are like that, maybe a different brand would be different, but if you can pull it off, it's not tight enough. So you just need to sand it down a little bit you could even file it probably. It's just I use I have a belt sander, so I use a belt sander. So we got that done. Now the next step for me anyway 
take bro propane torch. Now there's lots of ways, different ways you can heat this, but I just use a propane torch. Solder. And we're gonna heat this up. Just wanna make sure you get it all the way around. Like I said, the hotter you're gonna get it, the more you're gonna, like you're gonna distort this a little bit. Not really much you can do about it. You can just pull it down so you don't get a big bump there. It's so depending on the wire you use too. Some wires is a little bit more heat resistance. Like this stuff that we were using earlier, this is actually welding cable. And it has a, it's a lot, a lot, lot better for doing this. All right, so we got our heat shrink on there. Like I said, you will get a little bit of discoloration with using the lighter because of the butane. If you use your heat shrink or you use um, um, heat gun, you won't get that. So anyways, that's all there is to doing it. Very, very simple to do. Um, I do my crimp connectors like this style. You guys have probably never seen me do it. I don't think I've done it on the camera. Um, all I do with these, these are the crimpers that I use. There's a bunch of different styles. This is a snap-on set. Nope, sorry, this is a max set. Um, what I do is I buy the insulated style connectors because they're usually the cheapest. And you can just pull the insulator off. And then I throw that away. And then we'll just take this wire here. I'm just going to show you guys quick how I do it. And you know how I do it. Basically the exact same as the bigger stuff. This is personally how I do it. You have to do it this way. But there again, you do it this way, you never have a problem. Now, something you do need to do is that you're going to want to, for this little stuff, that's not the right size, you're going to want to put your heat shrink on first. So, get a piece of heat shrink. And the better heat shrink you buy, the less cursing you will do. I'll just give you that. I'll give you the word of, word of wisdom. Better the heat shrink, the less cursing you'll do. So where that little, little tooth is in there, that's what I use for crimping it down. You want to put it on the opposite side so where there's a split in that. You want to put it on the opposite side of that crimper down. And that won't pull off there. But we're going to take the torch again. You don't have to use a torch. You can use a soldering iron. I just happen to have the torch right here. This is actually way too big of a torch for doing this. But So just all I do is just put a dab of solder on top. You don't have to get super carried away. And then put your heat shrink on. Take your lighter. This is good heat shrink compared to that other stuff I was using. But the other, the good heat shrink, we they didn't have any more. So pretty hard to get more if they don't have any. Two reasons I put the I put the solder there. One, keeps the wire from pulling out. Two, it, sol the, it fills that gap so that nothing can get inside there. And then good dual, dual wall heat shrink keeps the crap out of it so it can't corrode. So... Hopefully that helps the guy out. I will put a link in the description to all of this stuff that I can find. Um, if you guys are interested, you want to help the channel out, you can buy it off Amazon. I do get a little commission out of it. And uh, remember, it's not rocket science. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments.